away. It's safe to look at this leg. Oh yeah! <laughs> hi hi everyone, it's Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay! I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup so you can become the character of your dreams. Uh. Today's cosplay is Ruri from Dr. Stone. Ruri in Japanese means lapis lazuli, which is really interesting. I didn't know that till I was researching her a little bit. I fell in love with Dr. Stone and I wanted to cosplay as someone from it. I didn't know who I was going to choose just yet. Originally, I wanted to cosplay Yuzuriha, so I might do that later. Uh, we'll see how I feel. But for now, my friend was doing Kohaku, and I wanted to cosplay as Ruri, so here's this Ruri video. I hope you guys are going to enjoy this cosplay. If you follow me on Instagram, you might have seen it before, and me work on it, and some little teasers. Um, yeah. But if you're new to my channel, make sure to click that red button down below to never miss out on any new cosplay content. Hmm. I don't think this is going to be a long tutorial, so let's go ahead and get into tutorial time! Ooh. The ingredients that I'm going to be using for Ruri is an old strapless bra, this really thick kind of cording. I'm not really sure what this is called, but the thicker the better. This thinner cording, as you can see, it's like definitely half the thickness of this one. And it's still the same color, so it's kind of like natural color. Of course, I'm going to be using this stretch material. It's not going to be accurate at all. But this is also the same material that my friend used for her Kohaku cosplay. So we're going to be matching in that essence. I have matching threads as well. So things not shown here are tape, thin wire, snaps, and jewelry supplies. First, going to measure my neck, which is 12 inches, and this will be part of the choker. I'm now going to take my cording, the thickest one, and start twisting it so it becomes really thick and measures out to 11. The reason why I'm making it 11 is because I'm going to add jewelry fasteners to the edge and a hook and eye so it's easier to wear. Before I can add the jewelry pieces, add clear tape to the edges of the rope to prevent fraying. Wrap the tape around both the edge for the necklace and the edge of the rope. Trim off the excess of the necklace piece. Next, sew the twist into place using white thread. I made several stitches throughout the necklace to help keep the twist in place. This is what your finished first layer of the necklace should look like. Take a jump ring and slip it into some of the stitches at the back to keep it in place. Do this for both sides. We're going to repeat the process and make a second rope slightly longer than the first one for the bottom part of the necklace. I just want to stress that it's very important that you add tons of stitches at the ends to make sure that this necklace will not break and fall apart with the jump rings at the back. For the necklace piece attaching this bottom part, I'm going to attach it to this giant ring that I put on the first choker that fits nicely. I want to make sure that it goes a lot lower but not too much so it still stacks nice. I tested it and tried it on and I'm going to remove one link and make it tighter. For the bottom part of the necklace, I cut the remainder of the rope in half. I'm going to create a loop and the rest will become fringe. To make the loop, I'm going to use the tape method and sew it together. The remainder of my rope was still too long, so I cut it in half again. I made sure to find the middle points and now I'm going to attach it to the loop in the middle, making sure the loop's binding is in the back. I wrapped tons of thread around these three pieces together to make sure they won't come undone. And then I sewed a knot. Use a needle to fray the now connected loop rope pieces. This is what one side looks like when frayed, and here's both sides. So now we want to go ahead and grab the other rope and we're going to attach this to the necklace piece. Find the middle of your lower necklace and sew your loop to the front making sure that the back side is facing the back. Once it's nice and secure, go ahead and wrap the smaller cord around the loop, securing it in place and hiding all your threads. Remember to tape the edges of your smaller rope, this way it does not fray and stab your neck and not have a good time. So now it is time for the fabric part. We're going to be making the dress. I only bought 0.5 of a meter, so half a meter, which isn't that much. You can see it's literally just a strip of fabric. This is What's wrong, buddy? You okay? I got this jersey stretch. It's blanket stretch cobalt. This is what my friend Bianca is using for her kohaku. And I am going to be cutting this into two pieces. So I really want the length to go there again. 
I'm going to be cutting this into two pieces. One piece is going to be one long continuous piece and then the other side is actually going to be an extra piece going against my body to make a long dress. You can see that halfway draped here, it fits most of my body. I just need to have some cover more. Someone's upset. So what I'm going to do is cut off the bottom part to create extra side bits and the back piece. Because this fabric can stretch really hard, I don't have to cut too much, but I want to make sure that it covers all the way to my hip. And then cover my butt as well, you know. But originally, Riri's outfit is really tight and stretched across her body. Yeah, so we'll make it this high and we'll cut right here. So it turns out that cut was actually a little too big, so I cut it in half, making a longer rectangle piece. So now I'm sewing those two pieces together, and I'm sewing that to the longer rectangle piece from the beginning to create one giant tube. So we're going to try to turn this tube into a dress. So I went ahead and tried on this huge little tube, and then I marked out the parts for making it thinner. This is the booby part, so I'm going to scrunch this a little bit before I add it to the bra piece to make sure it stays up. I'm going to take in some at the sides so it's tighter on my rib cage and waist. And then I mark the spots of where I'm going to be adding the white marking, like the white trim to keep her skirt closed. Oh, well this one came undone. So with the side seams, what I'm going to do is just sew in curved little lines to take it in slightly. And then sew tiny bits here as well. So you'll see I'm just going to basically pinch and pin and make it tighter and tighter. I'm going to be using a looser stitch first to test where it needs to go and then use the actual stretchy stitch. All right, everyone, you can see that I made a lot of adjustments so that this tube is now super tight to my body. You can tell because you can see all my curves in my ice cream pooch, but that's fine. Anyways, I noticed that there's still this little flap here that has a little bit of excess. So what I'm going to do is cut off the inside seams that are a little bit left over and then kind of like add it to the bottom. If that doesn't add more length to it, then oh well. So I have the bra on and I put the dress on top, the correct side where this is supposed to be. And what I'm going to do is fold over this top part into the bra, sew it on the inside and then cinch this just a tiny bit into the bra like this to give it a little bit of texture and accuracy. So it's not just like a straight tube across and that's what I'm going to be doing. Because I'm basing mine slightly off of different materials, I'm going to be cutting up the bottom edge of the fabric here, even though this is like completely separated. I think I'm going to just tiny, make it like really nicely not so even, because come on, I don't think they would have it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do something a little bit dangerous, but it's okay. I'm gonna bunch it up just like this. Hope you guys are nervous because now we're going to grab the scissors and we're just going to fold it up just so casually. And we're going to snip it at an angle. And ta-da, look at that jagged hemline. It's looking great. We didn't want it to be perfect at all, but I hope you guys can see how uneven it is now, which is exactly what I wanted. So now I'm gonna go on this side. I'm only gonna do a little, little sections. You can go a little bit smaller sections, like this. Make a little bud of fabric, and then just cut it diagonally, like so. Ta-da! Ooh, okay, that was a little more than I would have liked. So here, we're going to, we're going to twist this part. So you can kind of twist it and see what happens if I twist it. Oh, that made it look super jagged. So the more twisty, the more you gather, it's going to have a nicer hem. So you want to have three spots for that. It fluctuates in different source materials. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create some little nippy thingies here <laughs> and I'm just going to cut it like this six centimeters or two and a half inches 
So I'm going to cut three of these and then just place them sporadically on the slit, making sure it does not fall past my knee. And I'm going to first loop it in one side and then tack it in on the other side with blue string, making sure that I have tape to secure the ends, otherwise this will fray out and we don't want these edges to fray out. So it'll be like an aglet. Okay, that's not the point. So I'm going to go ahead and mark where I'm going to need the three lines here with giant safety pins because I want to be safe. Oops. Bam! leg. This is what you get. Anyways, so to be safe, I am going to be using super big safety pins to secure the sides and this will give me the right measurement that I want and then I can just go from there. I want these to be symmetrical and safe. Careful, safety pins are safe, but you can still stab yourself. And there we go safety pins. Too bad I can't just use those. But now it's time to go ahead and create our little loopies by cutting it in. We're going to cut it and then secure one side and just sew it in. What I did for the last part was cut the pieces of the rope, secured the edges with tape, and then I made sure to sew them in place and use tape on top of that, making sure that it was super secure and it will hold the tension between the two parts of fabric. I cut the fabric using tiny scissors. I didn't want to go too far in making too big of a hole. Honestly, the smaller the hole, the better because this is spandex and it's kind of a knit fabric and it's not going to fray. And even if it did fray, it's okay because it's Dr. Stone. The last piece for this Ruri cosplay is making the rope that goes under the boobs, which I now dub boob rope. You can see how I made it here and it's nice and structured and that's because I added lots of wire and the other part goes around my body. To begin, I drafted a triangle pattern that will serve as my base. Make sure you still have an ample amount of rope that goes around your under bust line. Cut a bit of wire and start weaving it through the rope. Once you have enough wired rope, trace the triangle design. I started tracing at the middle point in the top. That is where I'm going to attach the underbust rope. Once I have the full triangle, I secure it in place with the excess wire, but I don't cut the rope just yet. Use the rope that's attached and bring it to the front to create the other detail piece. When you find the middle point, cut off the excess and secure the rope with leftover wire or thread. Copy the length of the tail piece with a new piece of rope. Add this new rope to the middle point at the top with wire and weave wire throughout to make it more sturdy. For this next part, I will be using white thread to combine these two tails together to create the new triangle detail piece in the front. If you need to, go ahead and cut off any excess trim or fringe off of the little triangle pieces. That way it is symmetrical. And then just take your string and just continue wrapping around the edge to create a very nice frill piece. <laughs> Cut off the thread and bend the tails to the front over the bottom triangle point to create the detail. Now this part is done. Yay! Now using the rest of the rope, cover the middle point with a few wraps. After you're satisfied with the way that looks, go ahead and sew it into place using white thread. For the final part, I just sewed one snap edge to that little thick wrapped part and it helps keep it in place. At the other end of the boob rope, I went and folded it inwards and sewed the other side to the snap to it. This way, it will fit nice and snug and not pull too hard. with that cosplay just stretch pin sew and there you go you have a brand new cosplay 
actually I was really shocked at how well my ropes turned out. I'm really happy with the boob rope and the necklace. The necklace was the first piece that I made and I had an idea of how to do it. The one thing that I would definitely say did help keep the ropes secure and in place was hand sewing some of it. You don't have to do that. But I did because I wanted to test out and see how well it worked and you know what I think it worked out really well. So that way it still keeps the twists without it having to be retwisted and putting it on. I do like the fact that I made it into a one giant necklace than a two piece necklace. So there's that. I do have to confess though, I did try on my dress and the dress actually came undone at these little loopies here. After I had taped it and thinking that the tape would hold it together, that did not happen. All three of these little loopies snapped apart and so I went back, I had to tape it down, and then I hand sewed it. So highly recommend hand sewing that and then trying it on. <gasps> I really enjoyed this cosplay and if you did, make sure to click on that red button down below to never miss out on any future cosplay content by subscribing. Check out some of the videos that are circling around my head and remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!